project in this unit is going to be Form 10513, a sign-in form, on page 434 in your textbook. Now there are some important things to note over here on the left, quite a few this time. Your textbook may have a printing error on page 434 steps 11 through 13 should read as follows. At step 11, you should press tab two times, turn off small caps, and change to 20-point font size. In step 12, turn on the bullet feature, type Dr. Eleanor Clemens, then press enter one time. In step 13, you're going to type the remaining physician's names as shown. Also note, for accurate format scoring, be sure to apply shading using the Borders and Shading dialog box and select 25% shading from the style box. See Lesson 68 of your Word Manual for help with this. Okay, when you're ready to begin, click Start Work. One tricky element of this project is to be able to move the clip art up into that 2-inch margin without moving into the header area of the page. But if you follow the steps along with me, you'll be able to accomplish that very well. The first step is to change the margin move to the Page Layout tab, click Margins, Custom, and change the top margin to 2 inches, the bottom margin to 3 quarters of an inch, the side margins to a half inch. Click OK. Now you'll see your insertion point is blinking down there at 2 inches on the ruler. At this point, we're going to insert a boxed table with 4 columns and 28 rows. So from the Insert ribbon, click Table, Insert Table, and we're going to fill these numbers in. 4 columns, 28 rows, and OK. This is not a table that you will be using AutoFit for or needing to center in any way. Now, the next step is to select the entire table. Use the Fill handle here. Click it once and you've got the entire table selected. I'm going to change the font to Calibri 16 point and bold. Okay, so that is set for the entire table. We will only be typing the column headings in the first row, however. Scroll down and you see how this fills the page. It should fit on one page if you have inserted the correct number of rows. Next, we're going to type the column headings. So select that first row with the white arrow here over in the left margin area and set center. It should already be set to bold. So you can type name, tab, type time in, tab, time out, tab, and date. Let's add our shading. Select that row again. Move to the paragraph group, the borders button, and click borders and shading. Move to the shading tab, and in the style button, choose 25% and OK. Now you can click anywhere else, and we're going to insert clip art associated with a check mark, same size and position as the one illustrated on page 434. So move to the Insert ribbon, click Clip Art. We're going to search for a check mark. I really like this three-dimensional one, so that's what I'm going to choose. Now notice it is inserted down here somewhere on your page wherever you left your insertion point, more than likely. I'm going to manually change it to a size that looks right to me. You don't have to be exact. And then right click, click Wrap Text in front of text is what we want. Then notice how it popped out of the cell in the table. So we can drag it up to the top of the page and drop it right over here on the left. And notice it is up in the margin area that we set for 2, but it has not popped into the header. That's what you want to avoid. We're going to insert a text box to hold the heading and the doctor's names. So click outside anywhere on the page and go to the Insert ribbon, Text Box, and Draw Text Box. As long as you leave a half inch margin at the top of the page, you'll be fine. 
I should say not a margin, as long as you leave a half inch of space at the top of the page you'll be fine. First, make sure you have the text box selected. We're going to remove the border. Right click, Format Shape, Line Color, No Line, and Close. Then click inside the text box, move to the Home tab, and we're going to change our font size to 36 point. We're going to make it bold, and we're going to set small caps before we begin typing. So move to the Font Dialog Box Launcher, click Small Caps, or use the keyboard command if you remember it, and OK. Now press Shift with the first letter of each word for Physician, for sign, press the hyphen key, and then press shift for I of in, and for the S in sheet. Okay, we're also supposed to center this line, so while I'm still in that line, I can press center here on the ribbon. Then I'm going to press enter one time, and change my alignment to left. At this point, I'm going to press tab two times, and then turn small caps off, change my font size to 20, and turn on the bullet feature. Here we type Dr. Eleanor Clemens, press enter once, type Dr. Paul Davis, press enter once, and I am going to need to increase the size, the height of my text box, and type Dr. Janine Swordhoff. I don't know how to pronounce that. Okay, now I can move that text box down just a bit. Don't want it to overlap with the border on the table, but still now we see that the actual line physician sign-in sheet shows up a half inch down from the top even though the border of our text box is too high for printing. That's fine, we just need the text inside the text box to print. So this is positioned okay. I think my clip art could be a little larger to look good here. So I'm making that modification, and now there is another step that is up here on the checklist. It's a step that I neglected to mention when we created the table because it was not in the textbook itself, but the column widths need to be adjusted to leave more room for the names as is modeled there on page 434 and less for the remaining three columns. So I am going to come here to my table so that I get this parallel line border over this column line and I'm going to move over to make more room for name. Don't worry about the shifting up there, we can fix that easily. I'm going to give a little more room for date and then even up time in and time out. We could make these columns equal by selecting them. The reason my text box at the top is interfering is because it's overlapping the table. So when I interfere with the table, I interfered with my text box. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. We should get away from that problem. Okay, I'm going to select these two columns and move to Table Tools, Layout Ribbon, and click Distribute Columns. That is going to distribute the width of the selected columns equally. Notice that slight shift that occurred? Okay, that's good. I want those to be equal. The date has enough room, the name has enough room, and our table is complete. Be sure to check that you have not bumped on to a second page. It needs to all fit on this one page. But if your table looks similar to this and you have adjusted your column widths, you're ready to save it and submit it to GDP. If you get an error report like this in GDP, where it's showing the name column heading as misplaced. It seems to have wanted me to insert it up here, away from the other column headings, and delete it from here where you see it in blue. Don't worry about this, as long as your, your form looks correct, according to all the things that we just went through, I will disregard the error report. Okay, that is all the work for this week. We'll see you again next time.